Well, not quite. A look uh, <laughs> at the downtown airport from our Hilton Greenville Sky Cam. Another foggy day becoming night. Uh, but tomorrow, some of us are going to wake to some freezing rain. Chief Meteorologist John Sassford joins us. So, John, what do we need to know? Well, a storm system, you know, it's kind of parking itself in through New England right now, Gabrielle and Michael, and it's driving in that north to northeasterly breeze, especially through the upstate. As expected, it's bringing in very cold, dry air, so some of that is evaporating as far as the precipitation goes. It's very light. This is going to be a light precipitation type of storm system, so we're not talking about a major storm system, but then again, it doesn't take much ice at all. Even a trace of freezing drizzle or freezing rain uh, can cause some major headaches on some of the roads, especially the secondary roads. So here are the advisories. Freezing advisory from Haywood County, Transylvania County, through Buncombe County. County, also Polk, Henderson County, Rutherford County, Cleveland County, all the way over to Charlotte. In the upstate, we're talking about York and also Chester counties, all the way down into Florence. I'll talk more about the beaches a little bit later on in the newscast. Then, really from McDowell County, all the way through Morganton, Hickory, winter weather advisory through the Winston Salem, Greensboro area. Most of the precipitation will be very patchy and very light, but still, notice nothing in the upstate. But then we'll have just freeze. We'll probably have some freezing drizzle, at least some pockets of some freezing drizzle possible in the northeastern part of the upstate. Cherokee Union, Spartanburg counties, maybe late tonight, early tomorrow morning. I'll talk more about that in detail a little bit later on. Now back to you, Gabrielle. We'll see you soon, John. Thank you. Well, at this point, the city of Spartanburg plans to condemn an apartment building to make room for a new community center. But there is a chance that that process could change. WYFF News Force Mike McCormick is live and local in our Spartanburg newsroom tonight. Mike, why could it change? Well, Gabby, city leaders wanted to originally buy that apartment complex, which is partially occupied, but its owner, who also owns the Miami Dolphins, wasn't happy with the offer. The city actually offered $1.4 million for the Oakview Apartments there on Howard Street, but the owner wants $2.4 million. So at Monday night city council meeting, the council voted to condemn the complex through eminent domain. City leaders say the owner could fight that or just accept the original offer to sell, seeing as how the property only appraised at $1 million. 50 of the 105 apartments have tenants. They would get vouchers for government approved housing. Once the city gets the property and knocks down the apartments, the new TK Gregg Community Center will go there as part of the ongoing work to improve the north side. This is an opportunity not only for the north side community, but for the folks who are in uh, Oakview Apartments to, to get a new start. If nothing changes from the owner's standpoint, final approval for condemning the apartments from the city council is set to happen in two weeks. Mike McCormick, WIFF News 4, live tonight in the Spartanburg Newsroom. All right, Mike, thank you. Investigators in Oconee County have a homicide on their hands tonight. The coroner tells us it happened in Walhalla on North Laurel Street. Authorities responded here around 6 this morning and found a man dead inside that home. Tonight, they've identified him as Jeremy Little. The coroner tells us he had a stabbing type of injury. He says an autopsy tomorrow will likely determine the exact cause of death. Now there was a shooting that appeared to be a case of a homeowner defending himself during a break-in, but tonight that's being called into question by the Anderson County Coroner. Don McCowan says Marcus Brown staged the crime scene to make it look like a break-in when he shot and killed a man at his home last year. Brown owns a funeral home on Main Street in Anderson. WYFF News Force Tim Waller is here with a story for us tonight. Tim. Well, Michael, Brown has not been charged in last year's fatal shooting of Leandus Pickens. His case falls under the Castle Doctrine that allows people to use deadly force to defend themselves. But the Anderson County Coroner, in his final report on the matter, said this case is not what it seems. Anderson County, now won't suffice to be emergency. It started with a call to 911. Marcus Brown says a prowler is at his door. Yes, I have somebody at my door. I don't know who it is. Minutes later, a second call. Brown says he shot a man who was climbing through his window. I just came through my window and I just shot him. And you just shot him? Yeah, by mistake. I thought it was a burglar. Just came through my window. But nine months after all this happened, the Anderson County coroner has doubts about Brown's story. In his final report on the shooting death of Leandus Pickens, Coroner Don McCown writes, it is the opinion of this investigator. Mr. Brown shot Pickens inside his home and attempted to stage the scene to make it look like a break-in. He writes, Brown had an intimate relationship with the victim and accuses Brown of killing Pickens without cause. Anderson County Sheriff John Skipper. We do know from our investigation and from some recreations that we think that some of the evidence 
physically there and some of the statements uh, taken by the individuals at the home don't match up. Skipper says investigators have requested phone records that could help them sort out what really happened. But Solicitor Chrissy Adams says the Castle Doctrine applies in Brown's case unless law enforcement can prove otherwise. It's a case far from being open and shut. Brown's attorney, Drew Ann White, told us her client is not guilty. Gabby? Tim, thank you. Now to a major drug bust in Cherokee County. The sheriff's office says they got 168 pounds of marijuana off the streets. Deputies say the street value is worth nearly a million dollars. They seized it during a routine traffic stop on I 85 on Saturday. These two men from Colorado were arrested. They faced charges of trafficking marijuana. South Carolina's top prosecutor wants lawmakers to move quickly to pass tougher penalties against domestic abusers. WIFF News Source Ashley Swan is here with the rally held on this first day of the General Assembly. Ashley. Gabrielle, lawmakers are back in Columbia, and Attorney General Alan Wilson says this should be the year they pass comprehensive criminal domestic violence legislation. Today, Wilson and others gathered at the state capitol to rally support for their cause. According to Wilson's office, more than 36,000 people a year report a domestic violence incident to law enforcement here in South Carolina. Wilson is asking lawmakers to move swiftly to pass a bill that would implement a range of penalties for criminal domestic violence offenses. He says if South Carolina is ever going to change the culture of violence, then lawmakers must act now. I live in a society where you can beat your dog and get five years, but beat your spouse and get 30 days. It is time that we no longer accept domestic violence as an ongoing tradition in our communities. And it is time that we seek to address the cultural environment in which domestic violence continues to thrive. Senate Judiciary Chairman Larry Martin has proposed a bill that would prevent abusers from possessing a gun while under protective orders. It would also keep those convicted of domestic violence from having a gun for a decade after their sentence is served. Wilson has said he supports that idea in theory, but is still studying Martin's proposal. Michael? All right, Ashley, thank you. You might have noticed a lot of fire trucks converging on Converse College today. It looked like a big deal, but it was not. School officials tell us there was no fire, no smoke. Instead, they say a hair straightening iron malfunctioned. That caused an odor, which set off the alarm. Converse College says there's no damage and no one got hurt. Well, this tractor trailer overturned on I 85 this morning in Anderson County. We got this video around 10 this morning, but crews worked into the afternoon to get the truck upright. The wreck was at mile marker 40. That is close to the Greenville County line. You can see traffic did not appear to be impacted, and we have no reports of any serious injuries from the wreck.